capacity to recover from something that doesn't go so well, right? Adults know this, we take it for granted because we know how to do it. What we know is that kids can survive some pretty terrible beginnings. How do they do that? Well, resilience is part what you're born with and part the positive relationships that you have in your life that help build you up. So that sweet spot in the middle is your disposition, what you came into the world with, combined with the support that you get on the other end. So those kids who are born into terrible, terrible beginnings are you know, given foster parents or adoptive parents who help them and they become more resilient. So you know, that's just important to know that kids, we can you know, help them become more resilient by supporting them. So what else can we do? Well, we have to stop fixing everything. We're good fixers. Parents, you know, we know everything, so we have good ideas, and we've been there, done that, and we love to tell kids what we know, and we love to jump in and say, this is how you can make everything magically better. The number one thing kids tell me they want from their parents is for their parents to listen. They feel like they come to you and they tell you something, and you either come at them with, you know, four things to do right away, or you start asking a million other parents, you're texting the other parents, or you're Facebooking the other parents to find out, is anyone else dealing with this, and what should we do? And they don't want that. They know you're doing it and they don't want it. They want you to listen to them. It, just like if I've had a terrible day and I'm driving home you know, at the end of a very long day and I call my husband and I tell him, oh, you're not gonna believe this day I had and I start talking to him. If he starts fixing it for me, I'm gonna throw the phone out the window. You know, I, what do I want? I want him to listen to me and say, wow, that sounds awful. You know, So we have to treat our kids the same way. We have to be there for them and support them and listen to them. Um, so listen more than you speak. It really does work. Ask them what they need from you to feel better. They'll tell you. Um, so, and then the other things that we can do is ask questions about fun stuff. So it is our natural inclination to pick kids up from school or the minute we get home from work and, you know, see them to ask them like 40 questions about their day. You know, how did it go in math today? Who did you sit with at lunch? What did you do at recess? Did you have PE? What happened? We want to know what happened. They're away from us all day long. We want the information. We want them to feel happy. We want to know they felt self-confident. They felt successful. We want to know that everything was good, right? But they want us to ask about like fun stuff. They want us to just ask them normal questions like, have you read a good book recently? Or did you just see anything funny on TV? You know, they want to just talk to us about other stuff. They don't want to be grilled about their day every single day. And you wouldn't want that either. You know, if someone did that to you at the end of the day, you would be like, oh my gosh, I just got through this day. Stop asking me questions about it. So we have to like treat our kids as we would want to be treated in some ways and just, you know, ask them happy questions instead of grilling them about how things are going. We have to work on achievement praise. It's something that we all do. It comes naturally. It starts when they're two and they paint something and they're like, that's the best painting ever. It's not the best painting ever. <laughs> we all know this, but we say it because we're so proud and we're so amazed by the things that our kids can do. So it comes from a good place, but we are often praising them for the scores that they get on their tests and quizzes, um, the goals that they score when they're playing sports, the parts that they get in the play. You know, we're praising them for the final product. And when we do that all the time, kids learn that success is what's important. If we learn how to change our language, and instead of saying, that's so great, you scored three goals in that game, you're the best player ever, that's amazing, we say, hey, you know what, I really love how your team learned to work as a team today, you guys were really passing a lot, that was really cool. That's an easy shift in language that teaches kids to think about the bigger picture, and to not get so focused on you know, winning that trophy or the, the red ribbon. So that's one shift that we can all make, and I have to work on it too, because it's, it's hard. You know, you see things come in and you want to praise the final product, but when we praise the process, they learn how important the process is. I ask kids all the time, what do you really need from mom and dad, and what they need is to spend time together. They want to spend time together without us on our phones. They want us to watch movies with them and not fall asleep, and I'm totally horribly <laughs> guilty of that. I do it all the time. Um, they want us, they're not looking for big trips to Disneyland or, you know, big giant days out that are super expensive. They want us to go for ice cream. They want us to go for a hike. They want us to just, you know, play a board game. These are all simple things that we can do. That's what they crave from us. It's just the time spent together, just being together, low pressure, not having to perform, not having to talk about performance, just being together. So that's something that we can do. They like to hear stories about when you were young. They crave that. You know why? 
because they want to know that it's normal to feel all the things that they're feeling. They want to know that it's normal for a kid to be your best friend one day and not your friend the next day. They want to know that it feels hard when a game doesn't go well or when you forgot to study for the math test. So tell them. Tell them your failures. Tell them your funny stories. Tell them the goods, the highs, the lows. Tell them your stories. They want to know because you normalize it for them. You make them feel like, all right, I can survive this. This is okay. You turned out all right. If you turned out all right, I can do it too. 